Welcome back everybody to The Landing. I'm Tristan, joined with me as always is Fisher. And today, before we dive into all our football picks, let's just take a moment to celebrate the fact that we have our first recurring guest. So let's welcome Max back to the show. What's up, dude? And so we hey, got some applause in, in, the, in the microphone. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, Bye, Max, it's been quite a pleasure having you back here on the podcast. How have you been since then? Uh, you know, I'm back in college, so I've been doing schoolwork. Uh, and that, it's been a drag. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it is. I mean, obviously, like, uh, you know, I know what college is like, and it can be a pain in the ass, and especially uh, with uh, the type of work you're doing, it's, uh, honestly, I don't know how you do it. I, I couldn't do it at all, so. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> but you know what makes up for <laughs> is some good old NFL football. Yes, Absolutely. that is what we're going to be talking about. four games, Max? I did watch all four games. That, cool. I, I would say that was probably the best weekend of football I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I agree. That and was it's funny really good. I was one of four for my picks, and the one pick I got right was the one I thought I was going to get wrong. I predicted the Niners to beat the Packers, but I got all the other ones wrong. I was rooting for Cincy, but I picked the Titans, and now I'm rooting for Cincy all the way now. Mm -hmm. And then I predicted the Bucks to beat the Rams. They didn't. And then I predicted the Chiefs to beat the Bills. And that's the game. I want to save that one till the end because that game just. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh I, yeah. I can't put that. I think I went one for four as well because I think I had the Rams. Win I can't remember what my picks were, but I think I, think I had, did have the, the Rams, Rams winnings. And I think that was the only game I got right. So I think you picked the Chiefs for the Bills game too because you said you were playing Devil's Advocate. Oh, did I? Oh, I honestly don't even remember. So maybe I was two for four. I'll have to go back mm -hmm. and listen. But yeah, four, all four would... of those games were amazing. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was two for four. I got the Niners over the Packers and the Bengals over the Titans. Ooh. I chose mm. the Bengals not because I didn't think they, not because I thought they were gonna win. I thought it was gonna be a close game, but because mm -hmm. I know Ryan Tannehill is probably one of the most garbage QBs. In the NFL. <laughs> I could go on and on about that. The media always hypes him up because he'll have like one decent game against a mm -hmm. shitty team. And then it's like, oh, Ryan Tannehill, underrated AF. <laughs> like, no, he's a garbage QB, and we saw it in the playoffs. That last pick he threw was so bad, the one they got tipped. <laughs> oh, like right at the yeah. End of the game, too. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, that was all him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone thought Steel, Pit, Steel Plate in his foot, Derrick Henry, was going to have a massive game, but no, nope. really didn't do much. No, nah, that's unfortunate. And I mean, how could you uh, when you come that back oh, ready he, from an injury? Yeah, you know, he, he did have that one play where he got stuffed on fourth down. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> you know, actually, so that the Bengals game was actually the only game I didn't watch because I was doing this virtual interview thing where, like, you don't, it's not like an interview, like on Zoom or anything. It was like, a question pops up on screen and then you have two minutes to answer it in front of your microphone and camera and like once the two minutes is up that's it you don't get any redos and and what's stupid is that there's 10 questions and to move on to the next question that video has to get uploaded but with my shitty internet it was taking forever so i was doing this during the Bengals game and so i completely missed out on like basically the whole Bengals game i saw like one play like during the second quarter and that was it for me for that game <laughs> but um i did um but yeah, obviously, you know, it did look like it was a close game. And I was really surprised to see that the Bengals won. I'm like, holy crap, I didn't actually think they were going to make it, but they did. And I was really impressed. Um, but now they have to go up against the Chiefs, which is going to be really difficult. So, yeah, without a doubt. Was it Deontay Foreman? Was he the one that was car he was carrying most of the workload rushing wise for the Titans? Um, I don't know. I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't answer it because I didn't watch the game. So, yeah, I feel like they didn't utilize their other running backs enough because yeah. Foreman's had some kept flashy plays. They kept giving it to Henry, and he kept getting stuffed. I think. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Entire game plan revolves around having Derrick Henry back. Who, by the way, first game back after having surgery, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you expect is gonna happen? Then you got Ryan Tannehill, who, again, I think is probably one of the most overrated quarterbacks in mm -hmm. the NFL, who can't yeah. throw. No. Like, oh, we got we got Julio Jones. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, he Julio Jones got one touchdown on the year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was for a 53 year old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I remember when Tannehill got traded to the Titans. Like, because like, 
he never looked good for Miami, and you really couldn't blame him. Because I mean, he did have Jarvis yeah. Landry, and then he had Devontae Parker before he started breaking out in his contract year. And that's the thing too; like a lot of receivers, or not just receivers, but skill players in general, they don't tend to really like. Some of them don't break out and start balling out until it's their contract year because they want to get paid. And then they get paid, and then it's not uncommon for them to not do that well. Like Mike Williams this year, the I received receiver for the chargers like he started he was blowing up at the beginning of the year like i had him as a receiver in fantasy and he was the second ranked receiver for the first like six or seven weeks and then after that like he'd have one game where he had like 30 points fantasy wise like 100 something yards couple scores and then he'd have one other game where he got like a reception for six yards <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, so. Once they secured a bag, don't care as much. Yep, exactly. It's unfortunate that you know that kind of stuff happens, but of course, this is the NFL we're talking about, where you're. This is the most competitive people when it comes to football, um, and that's what makes the like I think the NFL so great, especially the last decade. Is it's just been so competitive, and just this playoffs alone. I mean, like, like even like with the start of the playoffs, I'm kind of like, holy crap! Like all of these are like really good teams. Like I, it, it would be. It's like it's gonna be a hard competition, especially with this last playoff games last four games like uh you know uh it's gonna be crazy it, like it's gonna be completely insane um mm -hmm. uh how the, the rest of this is gonna go and who's gonna make it to the super bowl i think it'll be so interesting if we have a 49ers and kansas city a uh, rematch a uh, chiefs mm -hmm. and 49ers um, rematch that would be really interesting um but mm -hmm. the other game that that was played uh during the Bengals and titans uh game the the one afterwards i think that was the bucks game right that was played the same day uh, uh, the bucks was played on sunday I think it was who, after, who was the after it was the uh Niners and Packers game oh, that was yeah. Saturday night yeah yeah so Packers and Niners yeah definitely didn't expect the Niners to pull it off but it was basically a last second win um and honestly that game like the 49ers offense didn't do shit that whole game. I mean, they like, they mean, yeah, they kind of pulled together a little bit at the end, but like throughout most of the game, like I kind of felt like they were the Seahawks offense. They just could not get a first down to save their lives. And mm -hmm. there was even at one point in the game, I can't remember which quarter it was, but the, the 49ers finally were starting to like uh, do something on offense. They're getting first downs and they were about to score and a freaking Garoppolo throws an interception on the goal line. And mm -hmm. it was such a terrible throw because he threw it low instead of above where the receiver can easily catch it without having the defender uh, being in the way. Um, and I just, I'm just like, oh my God, you're an idiot. Like, I literally thought to myself, I'm like, that right there is going to cost them the game. But obviously it didn't because they ended up beating the Packers. So mm -hmm. I, I just, oh my gosh. I, I, I was just like, yeah, Garoppolo is going to like screw up majorly somehow. But that was like really his biggest hiccup that game was that interception in my opinion. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, good for the 49ers. I think it's awesome to see uh, two, uh, two divisional rival teams in the NFC Championship. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to watch that game uh, this upcoming weekend. Oh yeah, that'll be really interesting. And I mean, like with the Niners too, they were such a low seed. Like no, like a lot of people, including myself, doubted them and didn't think mm -hmm. they were going to do that well. But now, like if you look at it, it doesn't. Like, it doesn't. It's not that crazy that they're in the NFC Championship. Because if you look at this team compared to the 2019 team that went to the Super Bowl, the rosters aren't all that different. I mean, sure, they don't have DeForest Buckner, who is a big part of their D-line, but I mean, they still got they got Debo Samuel. They got Trent Williams now, who they didn't have back then. Arguably, he's one of the best. He's been one of the best left tackles in the league since he since he got in the NFL. Yeah, and then they got uh, they got George Kittle, who's one of the mm -hmm. be best tight, arguably the best tight end there. I mean. I personally think Travis Kelsey's a little better, but when it comes to blocking and just, I don't I just, I'm a big George Kittle fan. And mm -hmm. like having him, having multiple running backs who are above average. And then, I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo, yeah. I mean, he's the one weak point I'd say of the team, but I mean, he has, as long as he's a game manager, he's fine. But once that he needs to pass it more, it seems like he just starts seeing ghosts. And, <laughs> He's, yeah, and that's the one thing about him this year. But I mean, when it, but their defense too. I mean, Nick mm -hmm. Bosa had double digit sacks. No one, I didn't feel like not a lot of people were talking about Nick Bosa this year, but he was really under the radar. He mm -hmm. had a stellar season. They got Fred Warner, who's one of the best linebackers. And yeah, they just got so much talent all around. And it doesn't surprise me all that much that they're in the NFC Championship. And I don't know. I, they're, I'm not rooting for either team in the NFC Championship, honestly. I can't stand the Niners or the Rams. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, who is the name of that, like, 320-pound lineman-looking guy? And they use him as a fullback on the 49ers offense. Uh, 
they, he, oh gosh, who, oh my gosh, they, I don't know if they, they didn't use him that much, but he was like this big dude, and I remember there was like this one play in particular where he went out to block, and he was just destroying the defense uh, with his blocking. I was like, it was incredible. I, I need to look up his name, but uh, I don't that, remember who he was. It was like in the 70s. It was like, like 73, was... or I can't remember. Was it uh, Kyle Juszczyk? I just realized I was muted this whole time. Oh, oh my yeah. God. <laughs> I haven't talked in a while. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm, yeah, I was wondering if you went back bad. to your it's Xbox bad. Live party chat or something, and you're just, <laughs> you're just like, uh, you ditched us. <laughs> this whole time. Wait, wait. I got to go, though. But first, going back to the Packers game, the Niners didn't win the game. It was the Packers special teams lost <laughs> yeah. the game. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that, <laughs> that blocked that punt. The <laughs> blocked punt. No one that went was, for the ball. Oh, yeah. oh, God. Last play of the game on the field goal. They got 10 people out there to try to block the field goal. Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, to be fair, I even mean, if they had that extra person, do you think they would have been able to block it? I, I mean, I don't know. Oh, hell no. Nah, <laughs> yeah, but it's exactly. Like, it's still just a bad look. It's like the special teams struggled all year. And then on the last play, on the play that you block this and you stay in and go to overtime or you don't block this and you go home, you send 10 guys out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is so true. Uh, Somebody's losing their job. I don't know oh, if yeah. it's the punter, the special teams coordinator. I don't know who it is, but I'm telling you, some people are losing their jobs over this. All right. Mm-hmm. And finally, before I go, I just want to say what my picks are for this next upcoming week. I got the Niners and the Chiefs. I think we're going to have a Super Bowl match in the making. Let's but go. I will say I am rooting for the Bengals. I want to see the yep. Bengals make it. Go. But I, my picks are the Chiefs yeah. and the Niners. And, the, and Chiefs, I think the Chiefs will win the Super Bowl. The Chiefs have been in four straight AFC Championship games. That's insane. That is oh my insane. God. And, and well, if the Bengals do beat the Chiefs, I mean, I think they're going to win the Super Bowl. Like, the Chiefs, I think, I mean, that's a hard team to beat. And if they can pull that yeah. off, holy crap, I think they I can mean, definitely they, beat the Rams or the 49ers for sure. I'm rooting for the Bengals. The Bengals beat the Chiefs earlier this season. Mm-hmm. But, again, postseason is a totally different story. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. But I'm rooting for the Bengals. But I got the Chiefs and the Niners going to the Super Bowl. Cool. Yeah. And Andy Reid took the Eagles to consecutive NFC championships, and now he's taken, and then he's taken the Chiefs to consecutive AFC championships. Well, yeah, he's, he's got to get that course. burger money. Oh yeah. <laughs> all, right, all, right, all, right, all right, I'll let you go. All right, thank, thank you so you much for having me on. Yeah, Anytime. of course. Right. Uh, yeah, if you ever want to come back on, like, just hit us up, and we'll schedule another day to like record an episode. So, thank you so much for being on here for a little bit, Max. Of course, thank you guys. All all right, you have guys. a good one. All right, so yeah, what we got to do is we got to start timing how long he joins in the podcast, and we got to figure out, like, let's see if he can break the record for each one. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, like, yeah, we just passed, we just surpassed 13 minutes in this recording, but if I'm going to cut down the beginning, uh, it'll probably be like, like maybe 12 minutes and 30 seconds. So that's yeah. how long it was in there for. But cool, that's awesome. Uh, good thing we had Max in there. We're trying to get other guests here on the show. Uh, we were trying to get another friend of ours who hasn't made an appearance yet, uh, but he kind of had to cancel last second. So hopefully next episode we can get a hold of him. And of course, we're going to be talking more about football because he loves football as well. Um, mm-hmm. And then I tried to get someone else, but that didn't really work out. I might reach out to him again. Um, we'll see. But okay. yeah, I mean, we'll more figure guests. it out. Oh, yeah. And we'll probably get some re- uh, extra re- reoccurring guests, too, in the future. And then the other football game we haven't actually discussed yet was the Bucks game. So yeah. the Bucks, uh, yeah. Spoiler on, over that the Rams won. Yeah, in case you guys, yeah, in case you guys didn't know that. Um, but the Rams were choking extremely hard with their turnovers. I mean, the Bucks had so many opportunities to come back and just slaughter them with those turnovers. I mean, it looked really bad on the Rams, and mm-hmm. it really did look like Tom Brady was gonna like come back and like really <laughs> use his magic to like win that playoff game. But the Rams somehow squeaked by with that uh, last second. Cup had that long catch. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that was insane. Oh man, that was a really entertaining game to watch. I mean, my my dad was so happy when the, when the Bucks lost because he just didn't want to see Tom Brady move on or something. Really? Um, but but also it's the Rams, you know, the same division as Seahawks. But um, yeah. but yeah, that I mean that game was so entertaining to watch. I mean, all the games were entertaining. Don't make me wrong. But like, it's a shame I missed out on the Bengals game and I missed out on the second half of the Chiefs game. 
I really wish I would have stayed. Dude, but, that was the most entertaining game. Oh, that was the most entertaining. Well, like, Two minutes. Yeah, because I went out to dinner with one of my friends, and the restaurant we were at, uh, we had a really good uh, table where the game was playing. And so when we got to the restaurant, sat down, there was eight seconds left in the game, and that's when Kansas City was able to oh, make a field tie goal, tie the game. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm, I, I knew at halftime because I left. I, th I left because I watched the entire – hold up. I watched the Chiefs game all the way up to halftime, and so that's when I left, and then that's and then the next time I saw the game was when there was eight seconds left, saw that they were tied up, and I was not surprised that the game got tied. Like, I knew for a fact that this was going to be such a hard, close game, and sure enough, obviously, it goes into overtime, and then, like, the next time I look up on the screen, it shows that Kansas City won. I'm like, wait, it's already over? <laughs> no, like, mm -hmm. I, was, uh, I, feel, I do feel bad for the Bills because, you know, Josh Allen had it's such a great – Great game. Uh, game of his life, dude. Oh, man. I, I can't wait to let, let's see what the Bills are going to be like next year. They have, You know they're going to be out for blood and like totally oh, yeah. just do everything they can to make it to the Super Bowl. Um, and I mean, the, the way I look at it, because you know, Josh Allen, or like before the season started, he signed his long-term deal. So, I mean, they have him for uh, – he's going to be on the Bills for a long time, and I feel like he's only going to get better. Mm -hmm. And he's just – that – Team is just so good. I mean, the, and they didn't have Tredavious White, who's their best corner. He tore his ACL earlier in the year, and and then also Tyron Matthew, the safety for the uh, Chiefs, ended up getting hurt like towards the beginning of the game, and he was out. But man, I was out with a, at a bar with a couple buddies watching that game, and I was on the edge of my seat the last two minutes. Twenty-five total points were scored. It was going back and forth. Gabriel Davis had the game of his life. He scored four touchdowns, with, which is a postseason record for a receiver. And yeah, I mean, Josh Allen, man, it's, I didn't like him whenever he was coming out of college just because, I mean, everyone just talked about how good of an arm he had, but he was at, at a small school, didn't do well against bigger colleges, mm -hmm. and whenever he went to the Bills, I was upset about it because I didn't want to get Josh Allen, but man, he proved me wrong. He is, I love that guy now. I was dumbest guy in the world for doubting him, but he had a lot of raw talent, and man, he's proved how good he is, and it's so nice seeing the Bills with a franchise quarterback. Oh yeah, and man, seeing Josh Allen like seeing Josh Allen on the sideline after the game, he just looked crushed. It made me tear up, man. I was so bummed out. But it was, I mean, it was a class act move by Mahomes. So, like as soon as the game ended, he immediately ran to Josh Allen and gave him a hug. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah that, that was great. That was, yeah, yeah, that was a good move. But yeah, I, that's gonna be a big rivalry for the next decade. I'm hoping. But I think honestly, I have a bad feeling that it's gonna be like the Patriots versus the Colts whenever it was Manning and Brady. Except I'm. A Bills fan, which would represent a Colts fan at the time, so I'd basically be a Peyton Manning fan, and Tom Brady always beat Peyton, Peyton Manning most of the time. So I feel like Mahomes is going to win most of those battles like he has. I mean, they're, they've they beaten us two out of the last three meetings, mm -hmm. and the one time we beat them was in the regular season, and the other two were in postseason. Right. But, you know, like I feel like it's going to be a big, big rivalry for years to come. And, I mean, I know like it was an episode or two ago we were talking about quarterbacks who – we grew up with that have retired and the only ones left like are Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. And I mean, looking at the future generation now, cause I mean, you got Mahomes and Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. Uh, and then you got like Burrow who's making a big run this year. Mm -hmm. Herbert who continues to do better. I mean, there's still improvements to be made on the chargers, but I mean, they could have easily slipped into the playoffs this year. Yeah, you got them, you got all of them. And then I know, I know there's more that I, I just, I'm not thinking of right now, but man, it's just, there's the future's in good hands mm -hmm. that's, it, that's the best way i can put it yeah we're gonna start entering a new era of football and it's gonna be really interesting um seeing how these new people hold up in the future and i'm really curious how uh trevor lawrence is gonna do i know it's kind of like i, I don't know i mean this is pretty common like people football players who who like you can look back and say they peaked in college, you know, so when they enter the NFL, they may not perform as well. And obviously, as you know, it's a completely different kind of competition there, too. But um, obviously, like Josh Allen, like you were just saying, you know, you weren't too impressed with him with how he performed in college. But obviously, he was able to prove himself and become much better than he was back then. Uh, and so I have and, you know, I, I mean, I'm trying to think of act I'm trying to think of like college players college football players who were really good but also held up their competitive level in the nfl i can't really think on the top of my head uh marshawn lynch maybe i think he because he was pretty good in college yeah, marshawn lynch was good college yeah he was but yeah. yeah are you talking about like a team that or someone that goes into 
the NFL just doesn't do as well? Or are you just talking about someone yeah, who goes to yeah. the NFL, doesn't do well, and then goes to another team? Yeah, like, I mean, Marshawn Lynch overall did better than he did in college, like whenever he went to Seattle. Yeah. But whenever he's with the Bills, he, well, I'm he trying, definitely shut the um, What's his name? Uh, Trevor Lawrence is a great example. You know, obviously he got, I think, too much attention in college. But, and, I mean, I can see why. I mean, he was a, definitely really outstanding. Uh, and he played for Clemson, which is a great team. But, uh, yeah. obviously, you know, now he doesn't play. He plays in, like, one of the worst teams in the NFL. So I think that's, like, mm-hmm. another reason why maybe he doesn't look as good. Um, but like if you were to like put him to another team like let's say we'll we'll say the Browns you know Browns I think are kind of an average team but even though they can definitely be a lot better but if you were to replace him and and take away Baker Mayfield and put Trevor Lawrence on the Browns like would he be a better quarterback I I mean I couldn't tell you Um, but I just think it's interesting how you know uh, a lot of these like really outstanding uh, high talkative college players when they enter the NFL you don't really hear about them anymore and I like I try to do my best because like it's really hard for me to keep track of college football players uh, mostly because I don't really watch college football too much but um like I'm, oh gosh I told oh my god I was totally going somewhere with this and now I just completely lost it um but, <laughs> that's good but no, I, it really goes to show you how much like coaching is involved too like how yes. important coaching is when I look a lot of players like I mean the, like the way I look at Trevor Lawrence's rookie year I think it's dumb to really have people really doubting him. I mean, he definitely made some mistakes, but I mean, he was on a team with Urban Meyer, who was a joke of a coach who got fired before he was, he was off the team before the season even ended, you know, just like the whole Mm -hmm. season for the whole organization was as a disaster from the word go. And his running back uh, college teammate, Trevor or Travis Etienne tore, uh, tore his Achilles, I think before the season started. So he wasn't, he was out for the year. And then, like, now, and then uh, Byron left, which I believe he just got hired as their head coach, and he was the offensive coordinator for the Bucks this year. And uh, he was, uh, he actually was a quarterback for the Jaguars whenever he was in the NFL. So he's a Jacksonville Jaguars <laughs> legend. And then is, and now he's the head coach for Jacksonville. I'm really curious to see how that's going to affect Trevor Lawrence, because I feel like he has a ton of potential. You know, I mean, obviously, I mean, he wouldn't have gone first overall if he didn't, if people didn't see potential in him. But I feel like he's going to have a much better second year. Yeah, he probably will. And mm-hmm. I mean, I hope he does get better. You know, I mean, th- these are, I mean, these are their careers, of course. So obviously, I mm-hmm. wish the best for all of them. Uh, but you know, I, I guess like since we already talked about the different, um, the different uh, playoff games, uh, definitely a great football weekend. I was awesome watching all those games, and of course, it was great not having to like like watch the Seahawks play and potentially lose or something either. But, um, you know, uh, but, you know, so yeah, definitely a great week in football. Totally looking forward to the AFC and NFC championship. But one thing I do want to talk about, and I wish we could have had Max uh, talk about this with as well, um, is the overtime rules because with the Chiefs and uh, – uh, Bill's game you know I, I kind of figured that game was going to go in overtime uh, once I left uh, during halftime but um, you know that if you look at that game you can definitely tell both of teams are really offensive heavily driven like they uh, like you can just tell like like they use their I mean actually I don't even know for sure how, what they use for their budget on their team but like you can just tell that the offense is just significantly better than their own defense and so I and so like when it came to overtime whoever was going to get the ball first uh, during kickoff, I mean, it was just pretty obvious that, you know, whoever was going to win the toss is going to win the game. Uh, that's just kind of like mm-hmm. how I personally felt like that game was going, and I'm sure a lot of other people may have felt the same way. So I just want to ask you, Tristan, I mean, I'll go ahead and even read out the uh, the overtime rules here, um, which is actually kind of a bit, because the re- overtime rules in the NFL are different during the regular season and the postseason. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, is there anything, I mean, you probably have a good understanding how the overtime rules work. Um, yeah, so, I mean, like, what's the difference? Is the only difference between the postseason and regular season one is, like, I mean, obviously a postseason game can't tie. Is that the mm-hmm. only difference? Because, I mean, when it comes to the, um, the rules, like, I feel like they're the same. Let's see, what does it say here? Unlike regular season games, postseason games cannot end in a tie, so the overtime rules change yeah. slightly for the playoffs, and it has bullet points uh, for both uh, the different rules. So we'll start with the regular season and what this says. is At the end of regulation, the referee will toss a coin to determine which team will possess the ball first mm-hmm. in overtime, yeah. which we all pretty much know that. Um, and then, of course, visiting team captain will call the toss. Uh, no more than one 10 minute period will follow a three minute intermission. Each team must possess or have the opportunity to pass the ball, blah, 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 blah. Sud- Sudden death play. What's sudden death? Where the game ends that's on any score? Is whenever it's like, yeah, whoever, yeah, that's that right. Was the old rule. 
Oh, this is the old rule. So what the hell? Why? Why is yeah, this yeah, the first so thing that pops up then? So how it works in the NFL is obviously it's a t- I believe it's a ten minute quarter, and if you score a touchdown on your first drive, the game is over. But if you don't score at all, or you just kick a field goal, if you kick a field goal, the other team will get the ball once and have a chance to either match your score or score a touchdown. But if they go three and out, they just if it's a turnover on downs, they don't score at all. The game's over mm-hmm. if you kick a field goal on your first drive. But uh, yeah, so if you, so, but basically whoever scores a touchdown wins the game. But if you keep kicking field goals, you can match each other, and if you can't match each other, then you lose. But when it's a college, which is the way that a lot of people like it more, each team has an opportunity to get, to get the ball and score. And mm-hmm. they'll start on the 25-yard line. And if they score a touchdown, the first team does, and the other team has to match it. And if they don't score a touchdown, game's over. Right. And I believe if they both score, and then it turns from touchdowns to two-point conversion, or whatever it is, you basically just have to match each other uh score wise and if one person scores the other person doesn't game's over and uh, that's the way it should be and you know josh allen answered like at the end of the press conference he was really mature about it he was saying the rules are the rules and if i was on the winning side of this if i was on the chief side then i would be celebrating mm-hmm. and which is exactly how it is you know it's a kind of thing where it's a good day to be a chiefs fan and i mean uh, but you know, both sides should definitely have a chance because they were both on fire. And even if they went score for score for score and then the Chiefs won, I'd feel a lot better about that. It's yeah. just, you know, the Chiefs got the ball and they didn't stand a chance. And then, you know, it was whoever had the ball in their hands last was going to win the game. It was one of those games. And those are the most fun games to watch because they're constantly back and forth. But, yeah, it's just... You know, I, I, it seems like nobody's happy about these OT rules except for the Chiefs <laughs> or Chiefs fans. I mean, but um, but I mean, I it, it really sucks, and I'm not just saying this as a salty Bills fan, but it's just it would have been a lot more fun to at least see them go. It's just the fact that we'll never know, and we won't have that closure of oh, what if the Bills got the ball one last time. But they never got that because the OT rules are dumb. Yeah, but, I I, I will know. play devil's advocate a little bit here. Um, even though I do think the NFL overtime rules should change, uh, kind of similar to what you were just describing. But if we go back to look at the college overtime rules, I remember uh, just this last uh, college uh, football season, I remember watching a game of, I think it was Alabama, and I God, I can't remember who the other team was, but I think one of the teams was Alabama, and it went to overtime. But each team kept scoring every time they got the ball, and it was just constant back and forth. And so it got into like fourth overtime or something. It was like, holy crap, like how long is this game going to go on? And so I felt like if we were to incorporate some of the NCAA overtime rules into NFL, like that Chiefs and Bills game, I think is a prime example. Like, like how many more overtimes would it go into? Like how many, like how many times would each team just keep scoring until like one of one of the teams just eventually just like get too tired to score again or something? Like that's how. Like I guess that's kind of that's like kind of the devil's advocate part that I, that kind of goes through my head. Uh, as you know, if we were to change those rules to that in the NFL, like you know the Chiefs and Bills would just keep scoring back and forth but like you said you know if the Chiefs did end up winning um, you would feel more comfortable with that loss just because you know the Bills were still able to hold their ground by scoring in overtime uh, so it is yeah. definitely understandable but I you know it's it's definitely not an easy decision um, you know there's probably there's a obviously a good reason why they probably have these rules in the NFL you know they don't want these games to keep going on forever um, but also we have to look at defensive side of things you know I mean I, I mean I kind of missed out on the last play unfortunately in that Bills game uh, because the next time I looked up on the TV, the, the game was already over. But, um, you know, it also does kind of rely on defense. You know, the defense does have to hold their ground and I can't make stupid mistakes. Like, I don't actually know what the last, I never even, I bothered to look up what the last play of that game was. But if, like, let's the say. Bills and Chiefs game? Yeah, like, I, I don't know. Who Travis scored the touchdown? Who scored the touchdown at the end? Travis Kelsey. Yeah. I kind of figured it was him, but I mean, Kel, yeah. Kel, Kelsey. Yeah. So, like, um, let's say he was wide open. Like, there was nobody near him. Then, in my opinion, you would have to blame the Bills' defense. You have to, like, blame them for not communicating and, like, un- and having them understand, like, who was supposed to be on that guy when he scored that yeah, touchdown. If, if we if we want to If we want to find a time to blame the Bills' defense— it would be with 13 fucking seconds left in the fourth quarter, and they just have to stop Pat Mahomes. Yeah, that, from that's true. Goal ring. That's but, true. I mean, at the same time, though, I mean, you're going against Pat Mahomes. If any mm-hmm. quarterback's going to drive down in that in just 13 seconds, it's him. And it was in less than 13 seconds because they had time to kick a field goal. But I mean, yeah, and there's that OT game uh, in college. It was uh, Illinois and Penn State. It was earlier this year, and Illinois beat Penn State 20 to 18, and it went into nine overtimes. 
Jesus, nine? <laughs> it was it was ten to ten going into regulation, and then Illinois beat him twenty to eighteen. Jeez, that's just crazy. Uh, I scored a game-winning two-point conversion. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but, I mean, I will admit, it is pretty entertaining watching some of those overtime games in college football. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, if, if the game's going on a long time, especially in the playoffs, go for it. You know, give the people what they want to watch. I, mean, I like, the ratings are going to go up like crazy. I wonder if, like, in the NFL, the reason why they have these rules set in place to where, like, the first team that gets the ball, if they score a touchdown, the game's over. I wonder if it has something to do with, like, broadcasting, you know, like having up, upcoming, like, show times after the game game and stuff like that I, I don't know if that has anything to do with it because they're like so strict on like having them scheduled whereas college maybe they're a lot more lenient uh that could have something to do with it I mean I don't really know the in-depth reason why they have these rules but I, I think it would be better if they would change it up a little bit and obviously what well, this is postseason we're talking about so and it makes sense that nobody can end in a tie like I totally get that um mm -hmm. and so uh, I mean yeah anyway I mean obviously we can talk about this forever I, I mean but like I just had to kind of bring up the other perspective of why I don't think uh, they should change it but I mean I don't know like I don't know it, it's 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 debatable you know I mean I'm I think the majority of people definitely think the NFL rules should uh, the overtime rules anyway should be changed um, and of course like NFL just has so many rules in general um, mm -hmm. the, oh my goodness like you know it's kind of crazy like isn't there it seems like this season in particular they were a lot more strict on uh, like not taunting penalties, but like uh, like touchdown celebrations or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's funny too because uh, what's his name? Uh, Tyreek Hill had he tossed the deuces whenever he scored his last touchdown. I'm pretty sure, and there's no flag for taunting on that. Yeah, and it seemed like all of the all of the uh, penalties were way over the top, especially in the preseason and at the beginning of the year. Anybody that did any sort of celebratory thing after a big play, there was mm -hmm. a flag thrown. I don't know. So I, I like watching their celebrations. They get cr pretty creative, honestly. Like, I'm like, oh, wow, how do they think of that stuff? Um, but uh, like, especially when we were in high school, you know, obviously I never thought about doing touchdown celebrations since I was a fucking lineman. Like, I'm never going to get a touchdown in my life. So, um, but I mean, I mean, I don't know, Tristan, did you ever like do any type of touchdown like celebrations when every time you scored a touchdown? No, no, because I knew it was going to, there's going to be a flag. Yeah, they, yeah, I think in high school, they're pretty strict on that. Um, in practice, it's a lot more fun but i mean like yeah in practice was the one time you could do it but no not in games definitely not <laughs> right oh man i, I would have killed to like have a touchdown sometime in my life but that's never gonna happen um maybe tristan you and i should just like find a field to play on and, we'll, and, we'll, and you can help me score a touchdown i'll be like a, i'll just pretend i'm a tight end or something <laughs> oh, absolutely but man i'm so excited to watch the bills and chiefs play each other for the next few years i think it's going to be such a fun rivalry i mean they already have like they've already played each other and, like the total scores on kansas city has scored three or 100 total points over the past three games they played and the bills have scored 98 total so it's been really close i mean it's just a almost an even game all together and it's just i'm really excited to watch them play for the next few years and they have a ton of film to watch off of each other mm -hmm. yeah what a great yeah, definitely they i'm glad they saved that game for the the end of the the week for um uh, for that for that football playoff uh, session and of course yeah now the nfc afc championships are coming up uh god it's so we're so close to super bowl oh my gosh and it's gonna suck because after the super bowl the super bowl we're gonna have to wait a long time for football season I know, it's a long time, um, yeah. and i love basketball you know like i i love playing basketball more than i do watching it i you know i, I cannot get into the nba for some reason i kind of i've been kind of like like stepping my feet into the NBA a little bit, like, cause I've been hearing th different things here and there and I'll kind of like do some research on certain players, but like I, the NBA, I think, you know, the biggest reason why I don't pay attention to the NBA is because Seattle does not have a team. And it really sucked no. when that got taken away from us. I mean, I couldn't imagine, like, I mean, we were pretty little when that happened. So like, if I was like a teenager, when the, the Sonics went away, I probably would have been like livid. I probably would have been super pissed. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It was our third grade year. Uh, Might've been four. No, yeah, it was in 2008. Yeah, I remember that happened. That was a big bummer, man. I remember waking up in the mornings and watching the news when I was getting ready for school. And I remember watching all the Sonics highlights. They always lost, but it was still cool. And uh, we got to see Kevin Durant his rookie year because he was drafted by the Sonics. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's funny. I 2019. Yeah, I went to a Mariners game with a couple of my friends, and I didn't even like realize this, but um, apparently that was like.
I think the 20th anniversary that the Sonics won the NBA championship. And, um, and so they had like a 50 year or or, sorry, 40 years, 40. Yeah. Yeah. 40 years. I'm like 20 years. That doesn't make sense. But yeah, 40 years. Yeah. And so they actually had like some of the Sonic players and like, I think one of the coaches there like uh, out on the baseball field. Um, And I didn't even know they were going to like be there uh, when I went to that game. So I was like, holy crap, this is so cool. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But uh, yeah, I, I really, wish i could get into the nba but it's just ah oh gosh i'm just not as drawn to it but like i said you know seattle does not have a team and of course now that seattle has a hockey team and i'm like really hockey like i don't care about hockey <laughs> a lot of people are excited about that i remember some people that i deal with, that i run into at work that season tickets like as soon as they came out oh, and really? i'm pretty i mean I, yeah I, def- I definitely want to go to them i mean they seem like a ton of fun but for at least from what, I, what i've heard and they renovated key arena now it's climate climate Pool arena and it looks really cool inside the interior looks really cool did you like do you follow oh sorry go ahead 